This is the video for the very first step in the making graphs assignment. The very first step in making a graph is knowing how to choose a graph type. If you don't already have one, you're going to need a handout, one of the note sheets from the front counter in Mr. Nelson's classroom. So get one of those if you don't already have one. The very first step in figuring out what kind of graph you're gonna make is thinking about your independent variable. The independent variable will always go on the x-axis of your graph, and it's the thing that decides what kind of graph you're going to get. So here's the flow chart, the first step. On your paper, you need to fill in these boxes. So the very first step is figuring out, is your independent variable quantitative or qualitative? And we've done this before in class, but to remind you, quantitative is a, a number and qualitative is not. So let's go down the qualitative route first. If your IV is qualitative or categories of some kind, then your DV, and then you need to decide, is my DV going to be a percentage or an amount? If your DV is percents, you'd use a pie chart. If it was an amount, you'd use a bar graph. It, it'll be more clear when we do some examples. Let's go down the quantitative route. So if your independent variable is a number, in that case, you have to ask a couple more questions. The next thing you need to decide, if it's a number, is it continuous or discrete. So those two words, here's what they mean. Continuous is when you could have a decimal. So like something that is like 2.76. If your IV could be measured with a decimal, then it's called continuous. If it's discrete, that's when decimals aren't possible. So for example, something that is discrete is like number of people. You would never have a decimal if you were measuring number of people. But if you were measuring amount of water, well, that's something that could have a decimal, so that would be continuous. If you're going to have something that's discrete, well, that's going to make you have a bar graph. If it's continuous, we still have to ask a couple of more questions. So you then have to ask, could you have more than one data point for each IV? What that means is, like, let's say that you were measuring uh, plants with different amounts of water, and you are going to see how much they grew as your dependent variable. So how much water they get is your independent variable. Well, that's something that could be measured in decimals. And if you were changing up so that you were uh, putting different amounts of water and you were doing trials, well, you're going to have more than one measurement for each amount of water because you're doing multiple trials. Well, if you could have continuous, you're going to have a scatter plot. And that's because you can have multiple dots along the same spot on your graph. And so it's going to be kind of a messy graph of lots of dots. If you could only possibly have one point for each independent variable, like let's say that you're going to be graphing uh, for that plant experiment, you're going to be graphing an average. Well, if you're averaging everything, you're only going to have one number for each amount of water. So in that case, you need to ask one more question. Would it make sense to connect the dots? If you say yes, you're going to make a line graph. Okay, so that's a lot of information. It's going to be a lot easier to make sense of this with some examples. Example number one. Let's say you wanted to find out what is the effect of different brands of tire on the distance a car slides on some ice. So your independent variable is going to be your brand of tire and your DV is how far it slides. So we always start with the IV and we go through the flow chart. Quantitative or qualitative? Well, the brand of tire is not something we can measure in numbers, so it's qualitative. So then we have to ask, is our DV something that's going to be in percentages or amounts? If we're measuring how far the car slides, that's like a distance or an amount. So that's going to give us a bar graph. So this one, bar graphs. For the second example, let's say that you want to find out what is the effect of the number of wheels a vehicle has on the distance it slides on ice. Again, we start with the IV, which this time is the number of wheels. Number of wheels is something that's quantitative. That's a number, so quantitative. So we have to ask, is it continuous or discrete? Well, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have a decimal. Like a car has four wheels, a truck has 18 wheels, bike has two wheels. That's a number without a decimal, so that's discrete. This also would be a bar graph. Number three, what is the effect of the size of wheels? A vehicle has on the distance it slides on the ice. Now our IV is the size of wheels and we can measure the size of wheels by measuring it. So that's a quantitative since it's numbers and because we could get decimals when we measure that's going to be continuous 
Now we have to ask, could we have more than one data point for each IV? So we have to ask, is it possible that when we're doing this experiment, we might get vehicles that have the same size wheel? Well, if you've ever bought tires before or been to a tire store, you'll know that they sell basically like standardized wheel sizes. Like you can get a 22 inch wheel or a 36 inch wheel and different cars can have the same size wheel. So it would make sense that we would have more than one data point for like the number 22. So in this case, we would be making a scatter plot. However, if you were graphing the averages, like let's say you're just gonna average all of the cars with this size of wheel, in that case, you would have a line graph because you're going to be just connecting all those dots and you're going to have one data point for each entry. Now it's your turn. In Google Classroom, there's a Google Sheet that you should be working on and the very first step looks like what you see on your screen. I need you to use your flowchart to fill in the first section of this uh, sheet. Ready, go.